Hello everyone, in this tutorial we'll be exploring ZeroMQ, which is a messaging library used to exchange information between multiple languaging programs on any platform. It contains smart patterns such as publisher, subscriber, push pull, client server, and it supports multiple transport protocols such as TCP and UDP. You can explore the documentation, it's clear and detailed. For example, you can head to the socket API section. Uh, to check the different messaging patterns, we'll be using in this tutorial the request reply messaging pattern. You can check all the details in the documentation, but in short, it's a reply server and a request client. The request client sends a request and the reply server receives this request and sends back a reply. We'll start in Python by installing the ZMQ. You can write pip install ZMQ. Of course, it depends on your Python programming uh, version. And uh, we'll create two files, zmq-reply and zmq-request. So to start in our reply server code, we import zmq. And we create the context, which manages all the sockets. Then we create a socket. Uh, we basically bind the socket to the network interface. The socket will accept incoming connection on this endpoint. So when we bind it, we add the local uh, address and the port of course any free port and when we created the socket we included the type of the socket which is a reply server then we add the function receive json on the socket which is a blocking call that will wait in the code until it receives a json message and then print it to the terminal finally we close the socket and we terminate the context to clean everything up now we finished writing our reply server We'll head into our request client to write the code. The first part of the code, of course, is similar. We will just import ZMQ and then create our context. After creating our context, we will create our socket, which is of type request. And here we will not bind the socket to an address. We'll actually connect this socket to the address of the reply server. We use the same address and the same port. After connecting it, we create our message that we'll be sending to the reply server. You can create any object. I created an object with sample data such as a name, age, and the country. Now we need to serialize this object to be able to send it over the socket. We will import a JSON library. If you don't know how to install it, just head to Google and see how to install the JSON library. We'll use the function json.dumps and add our object you can hover over dumps function to see what it does it basically serializes our object into a json formatted string so that we'll be able to send it over the socket now our message is serialized and ready to be sent so we just type socket.send json and we put our serialized message here that's it we close our socket and terminate our context so now we have the reply server and the request client, both codes are ready. Now I'll split the screen. We have the code of the reply server and request client each on one side. Uh, so to wrap things up, we first in the reply server, we bind the socket to the local address on this port and then we wait until we receive a message and then print it to the terminal, that's it. In the request client, we connect to the same address, we create our object, then we serialize this object and send it over the socket. Then we close everything up and terminate the context. So now in our VS code, you can click F1 and write create terminal. It will create a terminal, I will create two, and I will put them adjacent to each other so that we can see the request client and the replay, si uh, replay server running at the same time. So now we should launch our reply server first. The reply server after launching it will wait uh, until it receives a message. And then when we launch the, the request uh, client, it will create the object, serialize it and send it to the reply server.
as you can see we received the request in our reply server it's the same object that we've created that was an example with python now we'll head into visual studio to write a c sharp example we will write a request client in c sharp so we open visual studio i will create a windows form app you can create a console application or any type of application name it whatever you'd like and then use any target framework and create your project wait for it to be created and then right click on the project manage new get packages we will add two packages the zmq library which is in c sharp is called netmq reference to dotnet and then we'll add the json library which is newton soft.json we'll use it to serialize our object and then go back to windows forms uh, what i'll do is that i'll create a small form which will be consisting of a button which is the send button and then i'll create two fields the name field and the age field so a user will type a name and type an age and then click the send button and it will be sent to the python reply server i'll change the name of the text boxes for clarity and to find them easily in code recognize them and we can just add labels holding the name and the age double click on the send button and he will start writing our code first we'll import the two libraries that we've installed uh, the netmq and the newtonsoft.json libraries and unlike what we've done in python we there is no need to create context we just directly create the request socket we give it the address and the port in which it will connect the request socket connects to the address of the reply server then we'll create our uh, class person which holds uh, two properties as we've said before the name which is a string and the age which is an integer then we'll create an instance of that class a new person name which is the content of the name text box and the age which is the content of the age text box but we'll uh, convert it to an integer because we defined it as integer and then we'll serialize uh, this object this instance of that class into a json formatted string we use a function called json convert dot serialize object and then we have our serialized uh, json formatted string we use a function called send frame on the request socket to send our message to the address of the reply server now our c sharp code is ready we head to our reply server in python to launch it after launching it the reply server is waiting for a message we launch our c sharp program we write a name and an age and then we click send and voila we've got our request uh, from c sharp to python you can apply this to any programming language and you can use it on any platform this is a simple example you can consider it just as a proof of concept i will put the code on github if you want to use it uh, and if you have any questions don't hesitate to write a comment hope this tutorial was helpful and see you later